ISS was directed by Gabriella Calperthwaite, and it stars a really solid ensemble cast, actually, containing Ariana DeBose, John Gallagher Jr., among others. And this is a movie that I was starting to see trailers for about a month ago in local theaters. So I was like, I've never heard of this movie. Ariana DeBose is in it. It looks like a claustrophobic space thriller, so screw it. Why not? So tensions are flaring in the near future aboard the International Space Station when a worldwide conflict breaks out on Earth. Soon, the U.S. and Russian astronauts aboard the ISS each receive orders from the ground. Take control of the station by any means necessary. Now, in theory, this setup is really cool. You got three Americans on one side, three Russians on the other. Who can take out their opponents first? And not to mention, this movie is set in f***ing space. This movie had all the tools working for it. And let me start with the positives real quick. I actually think that the whole presentation of this movie and the overall direction is pretty good, I would say. I think there's definitely some good things about it and some really, really, really questionable things about it. It's definitely very much a mixed bag of chalky ice cream bites. You know those little ice cream bites that you find in the candy stores and they call it space food? And then you eat it and it tastes like ice cream and it turns out to be really f***ing chalky? Ugh, weird texture. But anyway, the whole synopsis describing this claustrophobic feeling, you get that in this movie. This all takes place in one location. You just feel like you're stuck and you can't really move out of this situation for 95 minutes. And that's a really unique feeling when you come across movies like that. Movies like The Hateful Eight and Ten Cloverfield Lane did that especially well. And with John Gallagher Jr. in this movie, this is bound to get Ten Cloverfield Lane comparison. So I'm just going to leave it at that for right now. And we're going to move on from there. Ten Cloverfield Lane is amazing, by the way. If you haven't seen it, it's a hidden gem. You'll love it. But I do appreciate how the cinematography is kind of on edge as well. Like, I don't even know how to describe it. It wasn't necessarily shaky cam. But you know how when you're moving around in space and you see, like, the zero-G aspect of it? Yeah, the camera's moving right along with the actors. And I think it's a really neat and really subtle effect that I don't think a lot of people are going to notice. And I do think the performances, for the most part, are fine. The standouts are the Russian actors that they got here. One was the Brute from Game of Thrones. You would expect him to be this big brutish character, but he's actually very intelligent. Really enjoyed his performance here. John Gallagher Jr., of course, the original Moritz from Spring Awakening on Broadway. It's great to see him again and still getting work in this day and age. And Ariana DeBose, this is her big follow-up from Wish, which turned out to be one of the biggest Disney disappointments ever. And I think she was okay in this movie. I don't want to say it was her overall best work. This is just one performance, though, and she's used to throwing every ounce of energy that she has into her characters. Asha, Anita, and this character, Kira, is very subdued by comparison, so it's a very big departure for DeBose, and I think she does okay with the material. Oh yeah, did I mention the material? Because that's my biggest issue with this movie. This script... These characters, man, like, my word. I mean, like, these performances are good and all, and I can tell that these are talented actors, but the characters in this movie and their motivations are so incredibly hollow. And for a movie that sits at 95 minutes, if there's nobody to really root for on this ship, it, like, yeah, <laughs> of course you're not gonna really get invested. And that sucks so incredibly hard, because given the whole concept and how cool it all sounds, and the fact that, again, it takes place in f***ing space, which, case in point, is a huge moneymaker for Hollywood. God, this movie should have, at the very least, been a great hidden gem thriller. And a great claustrophobic thriller at that. We're not getting a whole lot of those anymore. I mean, sure, over the past decade, like I said, Hateful Eight, Ten Cloverfield Lane, we get a few sprinkled in there, but they're too few and far between. The claustrophobic thriller is almost a lost art these days. And I think the movie had the right idea behind it, but the scripts just did everything freaking wrong that you can do with it. The character development here is extremely generic. The motivations here, while understandable, are very cookie cutter and basic. There's a whole plot twist. It's almost like a villain reveal cliche with one character towards the end. I don't want to give too much away, but I just did, I couldn't get behind it. It didn't really make a whole lot of sense to me. And I say that with all due respect, because ISS, this, this movie, there's really no trailers out for it and no publicity. So I'm not expecting a huge monetary gain here for the studio. 
But I'm sure for the people that do go and see it, the ending will divide them. And I understand where the movie is going and what it's trying to say. But gosh, for a movie that could have been really freaking cool, this movie very much flew way too far out of its orbit and into the black hole for its own good. I'm gonna give ISS a C-. Not the worst January movie you've ever seen before, because like I said, the development and the concept of this movie is on the right track. But the pieces to put together an instant classic hidden gem thriller like I would have loved to see out of this, they just weren't there. And they did not live up to expectations, sadly. Um, let me know what you thought of ISS down in the comments if you guys happen to see this movie. And let me know what your favorite claustrophobic thriller of all time is. As always, I love discussing all new things in movies and entertainment here on the regular. I appreciate your guys' patience so much with me as I navigate the scheduling here at the beginning of 2024. But please do consider subscribing and hit that thumbs up because trust me, there is a lot of exciting content on the docket, especially through this weekend. You don't want to miss it. So with all that being said, Backtalk, commence. Yeah.